Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love and today is an art haul day and I've got some great stuff that we're going to check out. So let's get started. So yesterday I was on the side of town where there's a blick <laughs> and I was going to just pull these art and start using them but I thought oh, I might as well just show you how naughty I actually am when it comes to getting art supplies. I got a couple new things um, that I ordered and then I'm at the art store and I specifically wanted large uh, sheets of paper. So let me pull that up here really quick before we jump into all these other goodies on the table. I wanted the 22 by 30 sheets of paper and I really wanted the Canson Heritage because I love that paper. But I, it looks like I'm going to have to order that because the only thing they had in stock large paper wise was the Arches. They had some Canson but it was the Legion's brand and I want the, the Heritage line. Um, but the Arches cold press watercolor paper is really really nice. And I also use quite a bit of it even though in these videos so far on YouTube you haven't seen me pull those pads out as frequently. I've got um, way more classes on Skillshare where I've used the cold press paper. But I like experimenting with papers so that's why you see me pull lots of other papers out to play on because I'll get a pad and I'll think "Ooh, let's play on this for a while. So this is a 22 by 30 sheets and I actually got a five pack and a five pack is about $45 which I thought was super reasonable because that's less than $10 a sheet and these are 22 inches by 30 uh, inches which is a really good size and the reason why I wanted these is because I've been doing um, those uh, quarter sheet or so um, cut up pieces or whatever um, so I had big pieces that I could cut a large piece of paper and do um, the cut up art in the different challenges and so I wanted larger pieces of paper to be able to put down and do larger challenges um, so that was a set of five sheets so I thought that was super reasonable because if you get a pad of paper, um, you know, the smaller the paper that they, they get for you, usually the more expensive that each piece is. Um, so I do like having that great big one. So I was looking online for something that would do um, more sheets of paper. Um, I should have got a larger one, but this is a guillotine cutter and I remember having those <laughs> when I was a kid um, at school. And we had this gigantic guillotine cutter that would cut like all these slices of paper. And so in my mind, I wanted a guillotine cutter. And so I have ordered an M. Rocco paper trimmer. This is 12 sheet capacity, so I could cut up several sheets at a time. But I've just realized it's a 12 inch, just like my little single paper uh, cutters. But the reason I kind of wanted this was because some of the watercolor papers are thicker than the 140 pound. You've got the 300 pound papers and you can't trim those in the little paper trimmer because um, they're too thick. And I could trim something like that on a big guillotine cutter. And I might look to see if there's one even larger because I almost feel like I want like an 18 inch one. But maybe, maybe I don't know, but um, I love it. I can't wait to uh, hack some paper with this and that's going to be a super fun. Um, so that's a fun paper cutter. I haven't got a new paper cutter in several years so I'm actually really excited about the guillotine cutter. I also, so yesterday I was at the Blick. Man, it's an expensive day when I actually leave the house with the intention of saying I'm gonna go get some big paper. I had to take my neighbor to the airport and then I thought I'll come back by way of the other side of town and go to the Blick. And oh, that makes it such an expensive day when I leave the house because I'm like I want big paper and I don't want to risk them shipping that to me and them dinging all the edges which sometimes I'll get some pads of paper and the edges are dinged and I'm like quit digging the edges and so I'm at the Blick and I think ooh I want some bigger paper cutting projects that we're going to do. So I want some bigger mats and I can make my own mats out of watercolor paper but I like some of these pre-cut mats just because why not. <laughs> so I actually got um, this will cut like a 6 by 8 this will cut an 8 by 10 this will cut a 9 by 12 so now we can look at larger pieces of mat around the pieces that we're cutting up and just see what we get and the Blick mats are these single uh, mats and somebody asked me in one of the questions where I got my double mat pieces because um, they were looking on Amazon because you know when I pull these out these ones that I usually have 
um, they're double matted um, and I got these at Michael's um, a long time ago in their framing department back there where the pre-cut mats are um, so Blick did not have the double mats and I actually like the double mats because then I could use the bigger one to give me an extra little amount to cut out like this if I draw the line around this it's going to be very exact without that extra eighth of an inch but that's okay I just wanted the ability to see larger pieces that we can cut in our cut pieces. So Blick is a great resource. Michael's um, Hobby Lobby back there and uh, you just might look around. Anybody that's got some framing supplies and just see what they've got. So I also got some more pads of paper because you know I need some paper. <laughs> um, these are Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press and the reason why I got these is because I did that black watercolor class and I used the black stone press paper which I've got right here. I liked this black paper so much and it's Stonehenge 140 pound um, cold press and I loved it with the uh, metallics that class that I did um, the thickness the way that it took the water I really loved it and I thought ooh maybe I want to try that in the white maybe I'll like it just as much as say that Canson Heritage which seems to be hard to get right now <laughs> so I got two pads of that I've got the 9x12 and the 12 by 16 because this will be a good one for making bigger pieces to cut up and I thought ooh, excited about that okay and the unveiling of the goodie bag here man let me tell you all kinds of fun stuff so I found some Faber-Castell um, stencils okay I'll, I'll admit these came off of Amazon I just threw them in the bag um, and I'll link everything that I can link below the video for us but these are just um, just a, a random selection of mixed media stencils that I thought ooh, let's get some of those and another thing that I wanted to show you before I pull all this out I also got um, at the same time I got the stencils some of the Schminky aqua bronze um, metallic mica particles basically they're, they're like um, metallic powders and what these do is they've got binder kind of in them and once you add some water to this you get some super super shimmery um, along the level of my favorite gold mica paste and ink by Kuretake you get that same level of brilliance in a silver and a gold and a copper and so I thought ooh, let's give those a try out because my favorite gold paste that I get from Kuretake um, comes out of Japan and as soon as everybody orders all the supply that's over here um, it seems to be really really hard to get <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted some alternatives for us with some uh, different shades that are just as brilliant I hope so we're gonna give these a little go um, in some future projects I've got copper silver and pale gold and I think these are gonna be amazing and you just put a little powder out add some water mix it up and you're ready to use it so I love that those are gonna be a those are like a super fun find I saw somebody use it somewhere and I thought oh, I need that or maybe it was an ad I think I might have saw a schminky ad I don't know it was super cool so yesterday I got another pad of the gray matters palette paper and you'll see me use a smaller pad um, a lot of times um, because it's easier to film with the smaller pad but I can cut the big piece into big pad into pieces um, but I like it because it's kind of a gray and you really can see the colors really well on the gray so I got a pad of the disposable palette paper which is fantastic for paints okay ho, ho, ho. so you know I love my Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 crayons so these are the Caran d'Ache Neo pastels. So these are extra fine oil pastels and I'm hoping that they are creamy and yummy just like the Sennelier pastels that I like so much. And because I've never tried them and I don't have them, I thought I'm going to get that today while I'm here at an art store and make my little trip worth it. So actually, let's just cut this open really quick and we can take a look at it because I resisted going through the bag yesterday after I got home. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Let's see what we got here. <gasps> Look how pretty these are. Oh, let's see. Okay, so got a little piece of paper here. Let's just pull one of these out. Oh, okay. So let me pull out over here. I've got a drawer beside me. Sennelier pastel. Here we go. Oh, see, that is very, very close in the creaminess and like the color vibrance and consistency there. So I'm actually kind of digging that. And I know I didn't need any more pastels, but that doesn't deter me. Because <laughs> I really like some of these kind of yummy vintage -y colors. Um, the ones that aren't so bright. Um, I love those. I love the oranges and reds. So I'm going to have some fun experimenting with the Neo Pastel. Oh, super fun. All right, let's see what else I managed to get. Oh, Ooh, so I thought this was super fun. These are clay shapers, um, which I thought would be really good. How do I get into this? I just might have to cut the top off of this. I can't see where you get into it. Um, I kind of thought that these are probably rubber tipped um, and they would be really good. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly what I was hoping. They're, they'd be really good for mark making and pushing through layers and really getting through um, some different shapes and marks in our paints. So I think those are gonna be fun. These are all size zero clay shapers. I've got the taper point, the cup round, the cup chisel, the angle chisel, and the flat chisel. And I really enjoy having silicone uh, scrapers and brushes and things like uh, these to paint with so I think having the little ones to mark make with will be just as fun so this was a fun find okay let's see what else is in the bag <laughs> okay oh yeah so during that black um, watercolor paper and metallic class I used fine tech um, pearlescent colors that I already had and this is the fine tech flip-flop colors and I like that I have a case for these I don't have a case for my others the flip-flop colors go on one color and you see one color in one direction and another color in another direction and so I'm like oh yeah <laughs> totally excited to try that out and I got plenty of black paper and that could be like a YouTube video that goes along with my uh, class that I've got so that'll be fun okay so I also got some new catalyst wedges in different shapes because I like the different shapes I have um, four shapes that I got yesterday because I love these little jelly plate shapers and they're um, they've got lots of little shapes but they're different shapes and they're different sizes so I like having this little set that I have just not purchased over the years. I don't know why I didn't do that. So this is the Wedge 03, the Wedge 04, the Wedge 02, and the Wedge 05. And so we'll be seeing those come out in some of our art. And I always have the regular Wedge um, 06, just the one with the straight edges on it, over here on my art table. So this is going to join this little guy. Super excited about those. Okay, what else is in the box? Okay, have I got to? No, I haven't gotten to the end. Oh! Okay, so I have the extra large charcoal pieces. Do I have that on my desk? I might not have it on my desk. Let's see. Might be over. Oh, yeah. So I have the extra large charcoal, and I've pulled it out and played with it and experimented and showed you what that was in some of the YouTube videos, and it's super fun. You know how much I love graphite. If you've been around for any time or watched my Steel Skillshare stuff, I was on a graphite kick and did like, I pumped out like a class every week for a couple months on graphite. They have extra large graphite in different colors. And I'm like, how did I not know this? So we came home with the graphite. They had a little end cap of graphite stuff. And I'm like, oh, did not even know I was missing out. Okay, Oop, what's down here? There's something else down here. Oh, oh yeah, okay, we're gonna pull these last two items out so I can throw the bag out of the way. Okay, so I'll see, this was an expensive day, shame on me. You people, if I didn't like show you the things that I got when I went out to an art store, you wouldn't know how naughty I was. <laughs> okay, so I'm really excited about this. These are Daniel Smith 
six colors of shimmery paints and I love Daniel Smith and we'll be pulling some Daniel Smith out to play in some projects but I love that these are the little tubes because they'll last forever these are like five mil and I've got pearlescent white and I've got iridescent copper and I've got iridescent topaz and I've got iridescent electric blue and iridescent Aztec gold and iridescent ruby and these will be super fun to play with the watercolors and add some sparkle into our paintings so that was super fun find I hadn't seen that it was on a little end cap of Daniel Smith stuff oh look at this and so I also got a fun little just fun thing and this is a vintage color wheel apron and I have an apron but how fun is this apron so now I can sit at my art table and if I can't find where I've thrown one apron I have another apron I can wear when I'm doing splashy things that would get all over my clothes <laughs> so a little color wheel apron how fun okay so super fun I thought maybe we could test out the pearlescent colors so let me get a piece of black watercolor paper out and I'll be right back all right I've got these out got a piece of black stone hinge paper I have just added some water to the top of these uh, fine tech flip-flop colors and I just thought let's just take a look maybe just paint some on here and do a quick little abstract and see what we get cuz oh look at these oh these are beautiful This paper is so nice and yummy and I love the way the metallics look on here it's amazing what these kind of do and I'm not doing anything in particular here I just want to kind of get a feel for what these might look like and how these kind of work on the paper and if they kind of run into each other and we'll just see what we get all right we're gonna let that dry for a second and then we'll see if they flip-flop all right this one has dried and I can definitely see depending on which way I'm facing with the light I can definitely see some flipping of color depending on which way I look at these um, so these are very interesting and I definitely think I'm gonna like those what if and I'm gonna test out these iridescent Daniel Smith's in a second but what if we came back on top with say some pastels and just mark make or we could come back on top of here with some um, metallic markers and mark make with those so there's a lots of fun stuff that we could consider adding to mark making on top of this um, that would be really pretty um, if I did pastels like this it would be solid on top of metallic let's just do it <gasps> let's just get brave <laughs> cuz I'm kind of interesting interesting trying to interested and in seeing like how these little Karen Dash pastels do so let's just let's just make it do something okay these feel different because they're a different shape than the Sennelier ones I do feel like they're a tiny bit less creamy in that little creaminess kind of feeling that I feel with those um, so it's kind of interesting um, just as an observation but I do like them like I like the color choices and they're giving me some yummy mark making on top of these watercolors and because they're so thick you know they show up really nicely um, on top of stuff whereas if I were using a colored water color paint that was had no shimmer to it it would just kind of sink right in um, so I like that these have that almost madness to go with the shimmery that I got going on here Ooh, I like that this is like a brown 
This is raw umber. Oh, no wonder I like it. I like raw umber. So you can kind of see that down there. Ha ha ha. Okay, so that's super cool. I did also think, what will these Daniel Smith watercolors do now that I've got some pearlescent colors? Will these show up um, in the same way as those colors did? So I thought maybe we could just take a look at these. And I'm pulling it right out of the tube, which I wouldn't normally do. I'd normally put this down on a palette and add some water that way, but I'm just kind of playing here just so we can see what we got. Say, so what do we got? What we got? <laughs> okay. yeah. Let's see, I don't want this spot of water down here. Let's just get that up. So if I put this down on a pad, I'll definitely, oh, there we go, on like my little watercolor pad or something like that. I think I'll pick up, oh, I squeezed way too hard. So instead of wasting that, I need to put that on a ceramic palette. So actually I might put it right here and let that dry in with my fine tech <laughs> because that's a that's a um, pearlescent palette anyway. Oh, let's do the silver. And again, we have way too much squeezing out, so I might just grab that off of here. We got a red. It is kind of interesting to see like how pigmented are these as I'm picking stuff up versus what I just had with the fine tech. And I think these are a finer, like not um, not necessarily like different quality, but like less pigment maybe. Like they're just a little bit softer. I don't know what the right word is, but now that I got more in there, maybe I'm just making that up because <laughs> that is showing up pretty good. Look at that. So as these dry, okay, hang on. Let's let this dry. Intense. I think intense is the word I'm thinking of because as that dried, it's not as intense as the fine tech metallics. Um, so that's kind of interesting, which that'll still be super pretty in a piece that we do on white paper. But I just wanted to test that out on the black to see the difference in the metallics. And this one really is like vavoom. And this one's like, oh, I'm a little more subtle. <laughs> okay, let's just get out a piece of paper and play a second with these others and just see what did we get <laughs> and then i might try out the pearlescent on look at this green Whew. oh this paper is so yummy oh look at that green and let's see if i add some water to it oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah Okay, and you know what's really fun about graphite is usually it's got that little bit of graphite gray metallic um, element to it. And so we might could come back and buff this later. Um, but it also kind of grays things down really pretty. Um, here's another color. Let's just see. Ooh, I like that. So these are actually feeling kind of similar to the charcoal set while not being charcoal. So the colors are slightly different, like there's not that yummy yellow that was in that other set. Um, and let's just open this up because I did have like this pearlescent. Let's just see like what that might do. And I've got this bit of green over here too, but I kind of just want to see like if for a, 
a, a minimalist kind of abstract like what what is this gonna do like what would it look like I like that is there like a pearlescent feel to that I don't know can you see it not yet kind of feeling like not yet myself <laughs> let's add some of this pearlescent green one and just see see now that looks almost like that green charcoal uh, graphite stick that's kind of interesting so does that one have a pearlescent sheen? I bet it when it dries it'll have a slight sheen and when I'm working with powders and I have that powder all over my hand these little microfiber cloths are kind of how I do that without getting up every few moments to wash my hands gets enough powder off my fingers that I'm not ruining the edges of my paper um, oh okay so now after that has dried I don't know if we can see this in the light or not but the green definitely has a little tiny sheen and the the pearlescent white has a sheen but only where it's like thick enough for it to pick up that sheen so not quite the same as my super duper heavy strong uh, golds and stuff but what if we try the mica powder really quick since I brought it up and just test it out I've got a little scooper oh there it is look at that it's a little tiny scooper I actually ordered a little scooper off of Amazon too recently this is a Martha Stewart one that came out with their glitter stuff a while back but I like having little tiny scoopers so I can uh, scoop a little stuff out of a powder thing and then I can put the lid back on that before I suck in a whole bunch of powder so this is the gold one um, that I'm doing and I'm just gonna take a brush with water in it and mix it with that brush you could do it with a palette knife but I just want to see what are we gonna get oh look at that oh look what that does as we're mixing it up um, probably best to mix it with a little palette knife um, so that we get it all mixed really good but check it out that's like super shiny all right we're gonna test this out let's just be brave <laughs> it's like my little mantra when I start making stuff be brave <laughs> now this is not the same as if I'm putting it in my pen obviously but it will be very interesting to see what what would this give us Okay, interesting for mark making. And if you had the right brush, definitely good for dot making. And because we put it together with water, thinking it would be very easy to rinse off my brush with water. Alright, that's looking pretty cool. Let's see, did this rinse out of my brush easily? Why yes, yes it did. <laughs> Alright, let's try that. Oh, look how shiny that is. Now that's some shine. Okay, so I think I'm really going to like that. I was kind of thinking as I was doing that, we could probably mix a little bit of that powder in with our favorite watercolor and have some shimmer come through that way too. So that might be something to consider. Um, also so this was a fun art haul I got lots of good stuff that I'm gonna be playing with I could also on top of this one <laughs> as I'm sitting pretty things on top of wet things let me admit that over here I could you know then you know play with oil pastels on top of this because like this color right here lovely <gasps> oh that's what it needed some fun little marks 
and you know with something like this I'm not worried that about ruining it I'm not trying to make some masterpiece of art I'm trying to play with color samples test out supplies if I end up with something amazing when I'm done well that's a bonus okay I really liked this color that looks like uh, green gold it's called uh, olive yellow so they just must they, they should have just put green gold on that <laughs> And with abstracts, it's all about the layers, and that kind of helps free me up a little bit too from something specific. Look at how cool I can get the more layers I add. So that's super fun. Okay, ha! Oh, love all the elements going on in there. Uh -huh. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this art haul. I might not have one for a little while because, except for the monthly um, art boxes, because I was walking around the Blick thinking, nope, I have that, nope, I have that, nope, I have that. And I thought, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> Get out of this art store. <laughs> All right, so I'll see you the next time.